Hey nesters, welcome back to Nesting Haven. Today I am going to share with you a, another Goodwill thrift haul. This is part two. The first part you guys saw all the items that I picked up to keep for myself. And today I'm sharing with you all the items I picked up to resell. So I'll go ahead and get started. I really liked the looks of these Bramble coffee mugs. I like the mugs that have the pedestal on them. I think they're really pretty. And these have these beautiful wildflowers on them. They are part of the a Fancies collection, the Fancy Florals collection, and they are vintage Japan. They had a price $2 a piece, and I should get around 22 to 26 with shipping included. I was surprised to see a lot of Lusta wear at this particular thrift store today. Lusta wear is making a comeback. I've always found it to be beautiful. I don't really collect it myself, but I do really enjoy it when I see it. And I really like this one, so I went ahead and decided to pick it up. It was a sugar and creamer. The sugar was $5, and the creamer was marked $2 or $3. And they are marked Vintage Japan on the bottom there. And the thing I liked about these is it had the butterfly on it with the florals, so I thought it was really pretty. And it's in this very nice violet purple kind of color, and I like purple, so... That's why I opted to get this set here. I think I can probably sell them as a pair for about $32 with shipping included in the price. This next piece I picked up is really cool. It's an original handmade piece from Sweden. And I really liked it. I thought it was very endearing. So I believe this to be a bride and groom and they are kind of on this cross here. There are two wreaths above them, which I'm not sure if this is some kind of a wedding tradition in Sweden. I did look this up to see and I'll talk about that in a minute, but it has this color of the Swedish flag, right? The blue and yellow. And I thought it was super cute. It does have the sticker on the bottom is put out by Boutique of Sweden and Original Handmade. So it has this little gold foil tag and it was priced $3. So when I try to look up the traditions of Swedish weddings, I couldn't find anything on standing under a wreath so i'm not sure about that but one that i found to be a little interesting that took me back <laughs> a little bit i am a little bit more traditional and i just think on a wedding day this seems a little inappropriate but i guess it's what they like to do uh so what it is is when the bride leaves the reception hall like if she has to go out to the restroom and the groom's still in the room, then all of the ladies that are in the room go up and kiss him, I guess. And then vice versa, if the groom leaves, then all of the men go up and kiss the bride. So I found that to be a little odd, <laughs> but I guess it's something they like to do for fun. It's their tradition, probably a way to make sure that they know, hey, you guys are, you know, you became one now. So if one person leaves, the other person needs to leave. You don't want to leave them behind. So I don't know. I found it a little interesting anyway. So I thought I'd share it with you guys if you hadn't heard of that either. And so I think I can get about $28 for this guy with shipping included. This next item is something that I wouldn't use in my own personal decor. It's a little too farmhouse style. I think people that like to decorate more in the antique look would enjoy this. So what it is, I paid $5 for it and I really thought it was quite neat. It is this brass church here and it is a votive candle holder you can put inside. This has the glass windows on it and the door opens up one of these doors open up, obviously, to put the candle in. I'm not sure which one. <laughs> I believe it opens up. Doesn't it open up? How does it get in there? I don't know. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe you unscrew this and put it in. Oh, okay. I lied. They don't open up. You put this in that way there. And yeah, so I thought this was really cool. I know there's a lot of people out there that enjoy the farmhouse style decor, which I thought this would look really nice in. And it has this copper style metal there and this brass metal. So I think it looks good with the mixed metals and it does have a little hanger here. So I thought it was really cute. And for $5, I thought I would take a risk on it. I think I can list it for about $35 to $38 with shipping included in the price. Now this next item I almost put back. I had put several items in my cart that I ended up putting back, 
when I was in the store, I sifted through the cart at the end and just checked things over very well. I was trying to be picky, looking for any damage or really thinking through how much I really would be able to make on these items because there's just a certain price point where it just starts to not be worth your time, if you guys know what I mean. This is a really cool find. I, I have a hard time putting anything vintage back. And the reason why I almost put it back is because it does have a little bit of wear around the tin lid here it's not too serious it's pretty clean overall given a lot of the conditions i see of tins are usually pretty rusty and the inside is super clean so i ultimately decided to get it because it's just too cool it looks very mid-century to me it has this cool blue color with this gold in throughout it and it is a vintage niagara falls tin the lid is great i've actually been there went with my husband back in 2010 or 11 <laughs> and we went on the american side but you know if you stand on the american side you can easily see the canadian side as well so yeah i thought it was a really fun trip they only had a dollar on this and i think i can get about maybe 18.99 with shipping included when I saw this next item, I couldn't resist getting it. It went in my cart immediately because I remember my grandmother having something very similar to these. And you could put your kids' or grandkids' pictures in them or your pets even. And I just think they're super cute. So they're refrigerator magnets, of course. And I don't see these out and about too much anymore. This is the first time I've seen them in a long time. So I thought someone would definitely enjoy this. And these ones were put out in 1982. They appear to be never have been used and you can kind of see them there. I really love the packaging to it. I thought they were super cool. They give you an idea on the back here of the different uses. You can put them on your office space, your file cabinet at work or on the car. I don't know if there's too many cars that have the metal dashboards anymore, but if you have that, there is a spot for it to put on the car. So I thought that was super cute. And I think I can get about $15.99 to maybe $18.99 for the set with shipping included. I absolutely love the looks of these vintage cast aluminum trivets. And this one is super fun here. It has a little bit of homemaking or wife mama humor, right? It says, kitchen closed on account of illness. I'm sick of cooking. <laughs> I love the image here. They typically are in black, white, and yellow when you see them. I look up comps on these. I could not even find the specific one here. So I would assume that means it's a little bit more rare so I could charge just a little bit more than the others for it. They were selling about 12 up to $16.99, it seemed, for most of them. I think I'm going to charge about $18.99 for this one since it is a little bit harder to come by and include shipping in the price. So like I said, I really enjoy picking up those cast aluminum or iron trivets. And I have never seen this next piece before. This is a napkin holder. So I was surprised when I came across that always see the trivets, never seen this. So this one's really cute. It says, bless this house, O Lord, we pray. Make it safe by night and day. And it has a house up here and a little haystack. So I thought this was really nice. And I think they look really cute together, obviously, with the yellow, black, and white. So... <laughs> it makes up the prayer makes up for her being a little bit sassy right <laughs> so i think they're both really cute for the napkin holder i would expect to get around 22 dollars for it with shipping included these next items are something i was considering keeping myself they are something i definitely would put in the decor in my own home but you know you can only keep so much and as a reseller you have to pick and choose what it is you want to keep and what you probably should go ahead and resell. These I think I can make a decent profit on, so I ultimately decided to go ahead and let them go. But they are hand-painted ceramic pieces. I love the size to them. They are absolutely adorable in this very small oval shape. And the thing I like most about them is the ornate leaf framing around both of them. They are a little boy and girl, and I think they were painted really nicely. So they're marked $2 a piece. These are put out by, let's see, Gare Inc. Gar Inc. Mold. I've never heard of Gar Inc. Molds before, so that's kind of interesting. They look kind of German to me. I don't know. Do you think they look German? I think they do. And I love that it has a little butterfly in sailboat. And the butterfly theme moves on over to the little girl side as well. So they look super adorable together. And like I said, I think I can get pretty good for them. So probably around $55 to $65 with shipping included. 
I seem to be on a candlestick holder kick lately, so I picked up a couple more. I thought these are really neat. They are in this geometric shape here, the kind of like spiky glass, and I thought they were really cool. I love that it was a set, so if it was just one, I probably wouldn't have got it, but since there was two, I definitely picked them up. They were marked a dollar. I believe this didn't have a sticker on it, so I think she just gave it to me for the set, which is a great price. I don't think I'll make a whole lot off of them. Maybe $16.99 to $18.99 with shipping included in the price, but overall, I definitely was excited to find these. I think they're really pretty. I was excited to find a Blue Bow Goose item. You guys know I like to save them. I actually found eight of these drinking glasses here, and I sold a set of three of these recently for $30, so I figured these would do okay selling as well. They were only marked at a dollar piece. I should be able to do pretty well on them, and I think I'm going to break them up in two sets of four, just a little easier to ship that way. And that way, if someone doesn't want the full eight and they only want four, it's much easier for them as well. Since I sold the set of three for 30, I should be able to get 36 to $40 out of the four piece set with shipping included in the price. I found a couple of art pieces I really liked. This store had a pretty good selection. This particular Goodwill reminded me a lot of my original Goodwill that I always go to. So I spent a lot of time at this one, a lot more than the other ones I had gone. And I absolutely love this. It was only marked a dollar and I was a little hesitant. I'm gonna hit myself in the head. Okay, my picture's safe behind me. <laughs> I was a little hesitant to get this because the corners, all four corners are a little bit bent. They have a little bit of wear to them because it's that paper cardboard type material there. This was put out in 1994. There's a little indication of that down here. And I just really liked it. It has Hansel and Gretel on it, the candy house, and I thought it would be super cool to use for Halloween decor, or Valentine's Day decor, you can use it for Easter, you know, just about every holiday is candy themed, right? <laughs> but I just really liked it and I figured I would give it a try. If it doesn't sell, I don't really mind hanging on to it. I think it's really cool. And I'm gonna try it around 25 to 30 and then whatever the shipping's going to be. So I decided to go ahead and get that. I was excited to see a few paint by numbers at this store. They had one that was an eagle that I almost picked up. I really wanted it, but it was not well done. You could see the numbers still through the paint by number. And so, I mean, I don't have the paint colors that goes to the set. I couldn't really fix it up as nicely as it should have looked. So I opted to leave that behind. Unfortunately, it was a great size and it looked really nice other than they didn't really finish it. But I did pick up this one here with the barn house. It has the farm and then the little house here, little farm. And I just thought it was really nicely done. And it was great that it was in frame. Now the frame is a little weird because it has stickers they put on it. <laughs> I'm going to take those off. And if they happen to leave some kind of weird, you know, mark from having sun dyed on it or something, I will probably go ahead and just repaint this because I mean, the frame is nice. It just might need a little touch up and black super easy to do, right? So I might end up having to repaint it. We'll see what happens there with taking the stickers off. But smaller versions of paint by numbers sell between 25 to $40. And this is quite a large one here and it's in frame. A similar paint by number I saw sold for $69.99 and it wasn't in the frame, like I said. So in the frame, I think I'm going to ask about $78 with shipping included. And I think that seems pretty fair given the size to it and it's in really great condition. I think they did an excellent job painting it. So paint by numbers are definitely a profitable thing if you can find them well done and in frame especially. This item here is very cool. I only paid $3 for it. I just saw the packaging, honestly, and I was like, I want that. I just thought it was the neatest packaging. And it's homesteading-ish because you can make cheddar cheese, yogurt, cottage cheese, sourdough, starter in this kit. They originally came with all of those items that you could easily make it. I would expect those things would be expired by now, you know, the sourdough starter and stuff like that. But 
easily can be replaced. They have this container inside and the cheesecloth and things like that that you can go ahead and use and I just thought it was really neat. I love doing stuff like this and I just thought it was a really cool idea. I figured this was something that might have been a product someone had used growing up and might be harder for them to come by so that's why I ultimately decided to pick it up. You know if they learned a certain way to make these things and they're like oh, I wish I could come across that again you know we used to have one of those so I opted to get it for that reason. I don't think it's going to be a huge money maker. It might not even sell, but I was willing to take a risk on it just because I thought the packaging was cool and there was a cool idea behind it. So I think I'm going to try it about $35 with shipping included and we'll see how it does. And then I also picked up this very cute lamp here with Walt Disney's Dopey, I believe this is from Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. You guys know I love my hand painted ceramic pieces. so. I don't pick up lamps too often. I couldn't resist it. It has this really nice wooden base to it. And I did plug it in to see if it works. And I'm going to have to replace this here because it flickers a little bit. It needs a new mechanism up there. And I'm gonna go ahead and replace the older cord while I'm at it. So they had $5 on it. Once I do a little bit of work to it, I think I can get about 55 to 65 for it. And I say once I do a little bit of work to it, I'm actually handed it over to my husband to fix these things for me because I don't know how to do that, <laughs> but he does. He has a channel here on YouTube. He has not put a lot of videos on it. He doesn't really have time. He works a full-time job outside of the home and we obviously have a lot going on within our family and my work. And so he will be putting a video up on how he does this if you guys are interested in it. I will link his channel down below. It is called Bearded Salvage and he does have a few videos on there that he has done with trash picking and doing some scrap metaling stuff like that and I believe he's going to be putting out some mapling videos here. We do make our own maple syrup. We have maple trees on our property and so he'll probably be sharing that with you guys soon too if that interests you. That is it for today's thrift haul. Let me know in the comments below which items you'd like and stay tuned to my channel for the last edition of this trip, this Goodwill adventure I went on. I have one more Goodwill thrift with me to share with you and then my Goodwill is opened back up. So I'll be taking you guys there to show you what it looks like. I'm excited to do a walkthrough myself and see all the changes. So we'll go and do that together and I hope you guys enjoyed. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Bye.